Hey guys, it's Jessica. <clears throat> it's March 13th now. I have to put my uh, clock ahead by an hour, so I'm going to do that right now. Well, this is kind of an emotional episode for me. You see... party clock. Look at this. <laughs> Study. One hour. Eat, eat, eat. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Party is six hours. So funny. Uh, Alright. So, I guess I'm going to start with my night has been a little weird. And... I'm also going to start with there. Now we're ahead. Crap! I lost my point. I might want to mention I've had a couple. I've had a beer, shot, and part of a drink, and some of my wine, which. There wasn't much, but I've had some of it. Oh, God, I wanted to preface, preface what I was going to start saying. Oh, that's it. So, I started doing this because I know I wanted to be in the limelight somehow. I know that I wanted... Uh, When I was younger, I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be a singer. I felt like I had the potential to be great, powerful, and inspire. So, that being said, um, I, I started doing this because you know, money is always kind of there. We all we all think about it. We all think about earning a living. We all think about having the things that make us comfortable, the things that we need, the things that make us comfortable, and the things that we want. And I'm weird. I want to be acknowledged. I don't want to be the center of attention. I am okay with minimal attention if the attention means that I'm heard properly. So, I guess, oh God, there's just like no light in this place. I guess I'm, I've got to uh, make it known that I don't need verification of whether or not I'm pretty. I'm cute. That's it. That's it. People can up up that, you know, men can up that for their own personal gain if they want, but I'm I'm not gorgeous. I'm cute. That's it. Um I don't need people to tell me I'm smart. I'm really smart. Period. I'm not the best. I'm not looking for verification. I just know what I am. And I also am a dreamer. I'm tired of it being a problem, so with that in mind, I'm going to say that my heart was a little bit kicked on today. Uh, I went to go find a cigarette. Needed one wanted to watch a dancing program a dancing program it's um about a real life story about a guy from Cambodia Cambodia that's what it was just remember now so a guy from Cambodia 
kind of a documentary, kind of a film, whatever you want to call it. I went to go get a cigarette at the bar. It's a club. You need to be a member or sponsored by a member. That was my first time there. And I guess the girl that came outside who gave me a, uh, no, she didn't give me a cigarette. Somebody else did. Asked me if I wanted to go for a beer. I almost never say no to that. Or, I mean, yes to that. <laughs> almost never say yes to that. But it was a girl. I'm trying to be celibate. I'm trying to be goal oriented. So booze is not exactly high on my list, especially what with a few weekends ago. Um, but she offered to buy me a drink. She seemed really interesting. She had these bangs, this red coat on, this one piece that was great. Uh, so I said yes after she asked me the second or third time. I go in with her. She buys me a beer. We start talking, so on and so forth. She's got a guy friend. She has to go to the bathroom. All this random little blurby crap ensues. And from it, his name is Aaron. Her name is Jenny. And from it, I take that it's a little weird and I'm good in awkward situations I want it to be nothing but fun and chatty and and you know make the beer worth her time but I shouldn't have said yes uh, you know it was like 60 40 I shouldn't have 60 I shouldn't have said yes but he he enjoyed my company. She was fun to talk to. It was fun to see them interact because they're friends. He'd never been there before. She she kicked my heart the first time. At the very end of this little conversation, this beer, I mentioned that because she kept asking me what my story was, and I found that a little odd. She asked me a total of three times. I told her before we went into the bar that I'm on disability. I'm taking advantage of the system for the first time in what is almost five years. It's four years and a month, two months, that I've been going in and out of shelters. Blah, 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 blah. I tell her basically what I've told you guys in an earlier episode, if you didn't know. I'm on disability. I don't have one. I'm listed as socially, situationally anxious. What is that? <laughs> I'm taking advantage of the dental. I'm paying off the bank that I frauded. I didn't tell her that part, but I, I'm paying off the bank that I frauded to pay other bills from a failed attempt at getting a house on just simple income assistance with a roommate. Big mistake. But I told her that I'm on disability, taking advantage of the dental, and then she asked me again in the bar. It was only two times that she asked me that. I asked her what her story was, and you know, a little conversation ensued between the three of us, and I said that I wanted to be Prime Minister. And she's pretty freaking drunk. She's already boasted once that at least she can keep level because her friend is equally inebriated and he's kind of hitting on her in a way, sort of leaning. I, I don't know. It was more physical. I thought he was holding himself just fine. They were both drunk. But, you know, men have a different way. Individuals have a different way, so on and so forth. She said, well, let's be unrealistic. Let's be real. Let's. She's not going to be... You're not going to be... I must have said it about five times. And, you know, I have a three-time limit. I am third time's the charm. It took me till now to figure out what I wanted to be. They expect you to figure it out in high school. I haven't graduated high school. I know that. 
she doesn't. I haven't. I, I, I know mediocre French. I'm just above a beginner as far as getting around in Quebec goes. She, but she doesn't know that either. She just knows that she bought me the beer and that I'm on disability. So I guess it's fine. But she said it so many times. I heard a little and then the bartender said after you finish your drink you gotta go after taking the money that the guy left me to get another drink after those two times I went out and then some guy was like hey who are you so on and so forth this that and the other thing and invited me in his name was Dave he was cool and then the guy called me up, you know, the guy came up to me while I was watching the pool game of the other people I'd been associating with, the bartender. I mean, this is so gossipy, but I, how the hell am I going to get it out and get my personality out there and, and get, I, I just want to be honest. I've had a beer, a shot, a little bit of wine, and that's it. I'm not, it's not even about being buzzed. It's just who I am. I, I get hurt. And that doesn't excuse things. I need, that doesn't excuse things. Politics isn't a personal thing. And that's what's running through my mind when he comes up to me and says, well, you were, people were telling me you were panhandling. I was like, no, I was asking for cigarettes and offering to buy it. Here's the toonie. Oh, do you have drip? No, I'm not a member. And you know what? I mean, everything he's saying to me makes sense, but I tried to reach out and I tried to say, and it's, you know, the conclusion of all that is my God, am I going to try hard? <laughs> oh, it's it's not about. I don't want to get into politics to to prove these people wrong. But man, is it becoming so much, so much the motivation. So much. And it's not a big thing, what he did, but there was three. You hurt me on a greedy level. You hurt me on a personal level. And you took... No, no, no. You hurt me on an official level. And then you made it personal. And those two things combined with a little bit of booze, I just had to cry a little bit. And then I went around back the, to the corner and I talked to Dave, who was really funny. A little bit into the other stuff, though. And, you know, it doesn't, it's not commendable to be sober. As in drug free. You know what, you smoke pot, I don't really consider that drugged. A little bit if you're chronic but you, you smoke pot recreationally I don't consider that drugged to not be drinking every other day or smoking pot every other day let alone anything else that's not commendable in my eyes that was normal before the buildings went up and before the stock market was ever a fucking thing anybody understood You know, the common folk knew of. It's not commendable. It's just... So why, why do I feel like these days it is? Why do I feel like I need verification for the fact that... I'm all for pot being legal, but when the average guy comes up to me and says, but they'll put taxes on it. 
but you, but the, the thrill of being caught, you know what, maybe, maybe it shouldn't be, maybe playing ping pong with the head of the pot, of the marijuana, of the dope smoker, maybe that's not the worst thing in the world, maybe that's part of the balance, considering I was addicted to it for a good six, seven years, maybe. But that being said, it's not commendable that I'm a sober person as far as things that aren't weed and alcohol. But damn, does it suck to be categorized as a panhandler just because I'm bumming smoke. <laughs> and I wasn't even bumming it. It was the first time I was in there. So I'm a little bit angry about that, but you know what? Motivation, that's what it's all about. Looking at these people judging me when I just wanted to be. I didn't even want to go in. Whatever. Oh my god. Looking at these people, looking at these things, looking at how quick somebody is to say, you can't do it. Oh, I'm going to prove them wrong. As always, I don't know which way this goes. Much love much love and uh, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams bye guys